Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the first link in the description, which will lead you to this GitHub page for Melon Loader. Now, what Melon Loader is, it's, it's what it like allows you to start modding Unity games, which are Neon White's made in Unity. So what you do is you go to this link and you come down and you'll see the usage guides. Uh, you want to click installer. And then up here, it says how to use the installer. Uh, and then you want to click uh, install. And then once you're here, you'll see melonloader.installer.exe. And in your download folder, you should see this, which will be the installer for Melon Loader. And then once you've loaded it, it'll say, please select your Unity game. So click select. So in order to find your game, you go to your local disk, you go to program files, Steam. Then you go down to Steam apps, common, and then neon white. And then here you'll see neon white.exe. So if you open this game, uh, you'll, it'll all, should all be good. And there should be an install button here. I obviously ha uh, already have it installed, so it's telling me to reinstall or uninstall it. But yeah, just click the install button and everything should be all good. So next, you're going to want to click the second link in the description, and that'll take you to this Google Drive folder with some mods uh, for the game. This is just kind of ease of access. The ones we're going to be getting are these bottom three here, Puppy Power Tools, Melon Pref Manager, and Universe Lib. And now, if we go to that neon white folder from earlier with the exe in it, there should be a mods folder. So if you go into the mods folder, you want to take these three DLLs you downloaded and drag them into here. Uh, obviously, I already have them in here. So just replace. From there, there's a few more mods that we're going to want to get. The next link in the description will be Neon Light. This is what adds the custom metals like from my Amethyst series, uh, as well as a bunch of other quality of life features uh, that are just really fantastic. So you're going to go to this releases page and download the DLL here just by clicking on it. And then you just save it into your mods folder. The next link in the description is an allowed mod that gives a little bit of an advantage. Uh, basically what it does is in the game, if you say throw a purify bomb and try and shoot the following frame, uh, no bullets will come out and it'll like jam your gun pretty much. Uh, what this does is adds a buffer so that if you press during that frame, it'll carry over to the next frame, which would be the earliest possible time you could shoot normally. So yeah, just get this, same deal, click this. And then save it into your mods folder. And one last one I recommend getting is input display, which will add a little input display in the bottom right, as shown here. You can see, looks very fantastic, it's very seamless. And uh, if you ever share runs, it uh, makes it a lot easier for other people to kind of figure out what's happening. Or even yourself, if you're looking back at your own runs and you can compare it to like a record's inputs, very helpful. So yeah, same deal, just click the DLL and save it in the mods folder. And one last mod that I would recommend, but isn't really as important, is Event Tracker. And what this does is, in the top left, will tell you when you do a bunch of things in the game, uh, and like the time that it happened. So you can have it there while you're playing, you can have it so that it only shows up after the level ends, uh, there'll be like a little list you can scroll through. Uh, it'll, there's an option to compare to your best times of doing certain things. And you can also customize what events it tracks. So it can track uh, card pickups, firing a card, killing a demon, breaking things. Uh, it's really good for keeping track of your paces and like where you're losing times in runs. Uh, but it is more of an advanced tool. Uh, so if you don't want to use this yet, that's fair enough. But I thought I'd link it anyway. Uh, in case anyone's interested. It's the exact same process. Download the DLL and save it in the mods folder. Okay, now we're on Neon White, and what you can do is press F5 to see Melon Preferences Manager, and all your mods should be here. Now, I might have a little bit more because I may have downloaded more mods, but we're going to go through and go, th um, go through some of these features. So starting off in card customizations, here you can change the text that appears on uh, any of the cards. So here you'll see it, uh, whatever you put in here will be on the um, card. Input display is very self-explanatory, whether or not it's enabled, the color that you want it. Uh, and if you have uh, alpha set to zero, then it'll match the color uh, of the card that you're holding. And then you can also input the colors if you'd like. Uh, Melon Preferences Manager, you don't really need to touch this. Misc Tweaks uh, will have Disable Start Mission button in Job Archive. So you'll see here in Heaven's Gate, there's a start mission button, which if you've beaten the game and gotten all the endings and such, uh, you will never ever <laughs> click this button. Um, so you can just disable it here. And once you go to the Heaven's Gate, 
uh, you won't accidentally click it ever again. Very, very nice. Neon light discord integration. This allows you to change uh, like when it says playing neon white on the side, the, it changes all the lines of text that it shows. Uh, you can make it choose, uh, you can make it show the level you're playing, how long you've been playing it, what your PB is, um, and all that stuff. In the neon light settings, there's quite a lot to go over. So the first one, enable neon green HP. Usually neon green, you can't see his HP, but if you're doing a boss fight, you'll see at the top, you can see his health. He starts off at 100 here, and if I shoot him a bit, we go down and stuff. Uh, just gives more of a numeric value, which can be good when you're learning these levels um, at a little bit of a high level when you're trying to hit certain damage thresholds at certain times. Next up is ambience remover. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, just ambience noise will be removed. The session timer will have a timer in the top left of how long you've been playing this session. The level timer is the same thing, but rather than the session, it's just the level that you're on. So you'll see here, if I start playing Glassboard in the top left, there's a timer that starts counting up. The session timer will be above that and will keep going up even between levels and such. There's also show total restarts and show session restarts. So you'll see in the top left, my total attempts, and you can also see your attempts underneath it, which is just your attempts for this session. Session PB will show your session PB per level. So say I finish a time of Glassport here, you'll see his event tracker, but the session PB will say in the top left. Uh, and if I was to beat that, it'd update to that. And then next time you come into the level, it'll reset. Next up is open ghost directory button. So according to this, uh, it'll show a button at the end of the level to open the level's ghost directory. Uh, but it isn't really working for me. I think it's supposed to be in the bottom right here and it's not showing up. Maybe that's because I have ghost off, I'm not sure. Disable intro will get rid of the where called neon speech at the start. Honestly, I'm not really sure what Be Gone Apocalypse is supposed to do. <laughs> I don't notice a difference with it on or off. I'm not sure what uh, apocalyptic view and replace it with the blue skies even means. Uh, boss recorder, I mean, you should just have this on. Uh, it allows you to have a ghost for the boss levels, which is fantastic. The cheater ban list. If you go to the leaderboards of a level, known cheaters uh, will have their name in red. Enable community medals will enable emerald amethyst and sapphire medals uh, and you can see them next to your names as well as amethysts and emeralds and it'll also show red medals on the leaderboard which in the base game will not show on leaderboards custom portrait will allow you to have a custom image in the bottom left of your screen so you can replace white down in the bottom left with a 512 by 512, uh, 512 image of your choice delta time i'd recommend having on that's this time under here that shows how much behind or ahead of uh, you were of your PB. DNF I'd also recommend having on. What that will do is if you finish a level without killing all the demons, at the top it tells you what your time would have been had you killed everything. It'll be red if it wouldn't have been a PB and it'll be green if it would have. Display in-depth game timer will allow you to change the timer color and like opacity and stuff. So you can see I can make it yellow and if I start the run, the timer at the top will be yellow and it also allows you to see milliseconds at the end here instead of just going to two decimal places which usually you can only see on the uh, leaderboard next is another option to remove the start button uh, start mission button two separate mods have the same option uh, this one i believe also works the inside screen remover what the inside screen remover will do is remove this screen here where inside crystal dust empty comes up and you have to click continue to end the level it'll just end immediately. A lot of these will be personal preference uh, and will change over time. If you want my settings, you can just copy these. As for the visual settings, these have a few different things. You can disable the player portrait, backstory, the bottom bar, low HP overlay, shocker overlay, and book of life overlay. Again, these are just preference. Power prep adjustments will allow you to set a seed for rush runs. Right now I have the seat 114 in, which is for yellow rush. It allows me to start with climbing gym and then go to STF. As long as shuffle level order is on, it'll use the seed. So you see here, I'll start with climbing gym. And no matter how many times I restart this level rush, it's going to be climbing gym every single time because it's using that seed. As for finding seeds, there's trial and error. There's also a seed finder tool, um, but I won't be going into that here. Uh, feel free to message me on Discord or anything like that if, you're, if you want to figure out generating seeds. Speedometer is in the top right. You'll see if I run around uh, how fast you're going vertically and horizontally. There's also verbose info, which will give you a lot more information, uh, but this isn't really useful except for this level actually, for the most part. 
Uh, there's a bunch of text color you can change. Uh, and the positioning, if you, want it, if you want it in the top right corner like I have it. Uh, on a 1920 by 1080 monitor, I have it 1750, 25, 25. The last tab is more VFX toggles. I usually play with all of these off, uh, except for disable sun, because in some levels the sun just completely blinds you and you can't aim. Uh, stuff like switch comes to mind. There's also disable bloom, which uh, just for a little bit of a comparison, other than, you know, disabling bloom as is and like, like a lot of glow and stuff. Uh, the big thing to <laughs> that this does is change how purified bombs look. So you can see that these are quite pink and purplish. But if I disable blue and I restart the level, you'll see it goes like red almost around the outside since all of that glow around it is gone. So again, just a preference thing. If you like it like this, one way or the other, go for it. I kind of swap between them depending how I'm feeling. This stuff like disable reflection flares, firewall screen effect, and stump spl uh, splash bang. The other one I'd probably recommend enabling just for advantage sake is this one. So what this will do is when you use a stomp, you'll see this white like trail that goes out and around. And on this level in particular, when you get to this point, it can be hard to like hit those shots there with that uh, effect in the way. So if you turn it off, you'll see if I stomp, that trail isn't there anymore. There's still a little bit of an effect, but like not that like wave of like white that goes outwards and allows you to see a lot easier. And the last one is to disable the CRT effect um, on uh, these menus. So you can see the difference here. Preference. <laughs> Honestly, I never realized, <laughs> I never realized just how much better this looks. I'm actually gonna keep this one on for now, uh, but we'll see how long that lasts. And yeah, that should be all the R. Uh, Mod settings, just really quick before I close it out. Uh, in the Neon White Speedrun server, which like everything else will be linked in the description, there's a channel in the cathedral called the Mod Shop. And this will have a bunch of mods that people are making and stuff. And at the top, there are these tags. Uh, so there's stuff like quality of life, blah, blah, blah. And uh, the SRC verified are the ones that will uh, not be banned at all. And you can change a bunch of stuff and uh, pick and choose what you want. So yeah, other than that, I hope that's, um, I hope that answered all your questions about Neon White, getting into modding and uh, all that stuff. Any questions as always, feel free to comment or message me on Discord. So yeah, see ya.